just work you turn. Hi Niall. Hi Jay, you alright? Yeah, you. Yeah, good, Shirley. What are we doing? We're going to LA next week and approximately seven days before we flew, I realised that I've got less than six months on my passport, so I have to get you. Bye. <laughs> So we're gonna do a Q and A about business because you apparently are an expert in that. According to who? According to nobody. <laughs> so basically, what I'm doing on my second channel is a series of Q and As, just to give people more of an insight into the group, our stories, what we do, mm -hmm. our ambitions. It's a good one for us to start with. How does your relationship, being siblings, affect how you work together? You know, I guess we could be like short tempered with each other because we've been with each other since we were born. Do you know what I mean? Only two and a half years between us. It's difficult to switch from in and out of like right now we're doing business and now we're being brothers and sisters brother yeah. and sister. sometimes they, they cross over in good ways and in bad ways but then at the same time for the most part 80 percent of the time we're awesome together so it's like it's great yeah i think the lines are definitely blurred then there is times where i'm like niall i need you to listen to me and respect me as a manager and as a business partner and then there are other times where it's 3 a.m and we're in a nightclub and we're just broad sis and we're dancing together with a body diet coke in our hands i'm proud and I want to work hard because all of my work is for myself and for my family. Like that's inspiring to me. How and when did you decide you wanted to be a business owner? The one at the moment really, sort of. I've been very ballsy at just taking risks and just making steps and I've always been a guy to just, just try stuff even if it doesn't work out. So dying a business was just in that part of me being me. But when I was sort of 16, 7 when I left school, did a lot of personal development stuff. Obviously I was a professional athlete so I was interested in wealth creation and I'd read a lot of books and watch a lot of videos and understand very early on that you know, getting a job, working for someone else is something that I didn't want to do. And this was way, way before like YouTube was even a thing for me. I was doing it, but it wasn't a means of making money. And then I think it accidentally all sort of happened all at the right time when I was like, to my, I said to my coach, I just said like, like, why don't we just try and do like an online gymnastics fitness thing? Social media age just started to, to happen and then I knew there was online PTs and just making fortune. I was like, we could do that with gymnastics online and just get members on this portal where we'd have gymnastics videos and they can learn a muscle up and a handstand and a planche. And, um, we started and I filmed, I worked really hard on filming like, some videos and we came up with like, this six week program thing. We launched it on like Christmas time. And I think it was a couple of weeks into January that my first video went viral on YouTube. So then all of a sudden, in a matter of in a matter of two or three months, I went from like 10,000 to a million subscribers on YouTube almost by accident, which obviously then really f***ing helped the business initially. And it was like, didn't really know what to expect, let's try this, to then actually landing on my feet like what we did. Didn't really know what was going on other than I was doing the right thing, so I just kept filming videos, kept talking about the body bible, and then at the same time we did the clothing as well and the merchandise. So like the, the main marketing tool was YouTube on it, and I was going so viral on there, getting tens and tens of millions of views a month. So when I was talking about the businesses that we had, we were just making money that I didn't even comprehend, couldn't even comprehend it was real. Like like within two months, I was making over over ten thousand a month on multiple businesses. Don't know, maybe a bit of luck, but also I think you need a bit of that right place, right time. I heard a thing on a podcast yesterday that said there's no such thing as luck. Like luck is where hard work and opportunity cross at the right place at the right time. Yeah. Nobody just sort of gets lucky. No. But we're like I say before that, I was making YouTube videos before, like four years before that. I was working hard still for four yeah. years. I was being, a, you know, I was training the gym six hours a day, every day. It's just I had a foundation there and like a like a real good mindset and belief of work, work ethic. So it was like, it didn't matter what I was doing, I was going to make it work and I was going to figure it out. Another question, which is, are you able to separate your work life and your quote unquote normal life? Whatever that is. Um, difficult when you make videos. Yeah, though. For the, for the most part, I mean, even when my normal life, in terms of my friends and my family, when we're filming, we still, when we're working, we're still like, they always cross over, don't they? I was gonna say, my work life is my normal life. That's what I mean, it's, it's like, it's, it's so, we don't, we don't go to work and then come home and then you have your thing. We, we live, breathe and eat, sleep and breathe what we do all day every day. We all live together, that's the squad that we've developed, which I, which is really 
Also, we've got a great group of people around us. We're on all the time, or we're off all, you know, they're just a crossover. It's, like, it's difficult to explain, but you'll know if you, if you sort of make videos, I think, as well, because of one of those where, like right now, this is a good example of it. I We've got up to go to Durham at 6 a.m. this morning to go to Passport. Like, I don't particularly want to, to work, but then at the same time, this isn't really work, is it? You just, no, you just, just, you just switch the camera on in the car, so we're technically working. There's no separation there, is yeah. there? We're having a normal chat, this isn't a blah, blah, crazy video, let's make it entertaining. We're just having a really good chat, which yeah. we probably would have this chat. I was going to say, if, was, if we're, if we're driving home on, on the way there, we had similar chats. everything that we're chatting about is about work or well, like, yeah. whatever work is, do you know what I mean? We don't work, do we? No. That's the difference, like sometimes it's a mindset shift. We don't work, we, like we live. And we, well, I suppose we, we work hard, but it's not like, right, I've got my got my job. Most people watching this, like, which is society driven, which by the way, I'm not talking about this in a negative way, but they, they get up and they go to work. Come on. Ours is 24 7, 365, isn't it? Yeah. All the time. All we, we decided to work for ourselves so that we didn't have a nine to five, and instead we created a. 24-7-365. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're sat there and you want to be on, you want to be right, I'm going to be an entrepreneur and I want to be a business owner. I'm sorry, guy, last lad, you're 24-7-365. Yeah. I'm really sorry, but yeah. you've got to deal with that. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have got to deal with it. Name one thing slash skill you admire about each other when it comes to business. You go first. <laughs> well, I can name more, but I'm sure we can. Your work ethic's unmatched. Unmatched, honestly. Which you know, you know that. You know you're the hardest worker in the room, like, and I, I always like prided myself, particularly as an athlete, on that. We've just sort of been cut from a different cloth where those Wilsons tend to be the hardest worker in the room, but then you know, like, I feel like we've switched roles over the last five years. And currently, right now, I'll say this to anyone, I don't know any person on this planet that works hard. Like, I don't know personally anyone that works hard in the fact. I don't know anyone who works hard. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Just unreal to have someone like that as a sister, but as someone in your team like that. You know the job's getting done. Wait, well, the job's got done three days ago. So, I mean, that's how hard you work and how much you want it. But then I think the way we are, our ability to be able to communicate with people and read the room and like our, our social skills are just next level. Yeah. Particularly for our age. I know me and you could rock a room of corporate people who are like multi-millionaires and just like fit in. But then also, it doesn't matter the environment, we'll be able to adapt and fit yeah. in. Yeah. I think for you, it's got to be like your just genius at your craft. like creativity is just I know that no matter what matter what brand or like brief or concept or scenario or product or whatever the approach is Niall Niall can think of a concept or an idea or a whatever that is just genius like so easily as well and you just because you th there are certain things and i'm sure i frustrate you in different ways there are certain things that frustrate me or i'm like come on we need to do this or we need to do that but then when it comes to that i just know that no matter what yeah. you'll just be able to come up with the most genius thing in the entire world and i'm like how has he done that it's yeah. annoying it's annoying sometimes i'm i might sit there and try and think of something for days or what it might look like but i know that if i come to you and say what do you think about this for yourself or for us or for anyone in the team like you have the ability to see that as well in other people's content. <laughs> this is a good one to finish on. <laughs> if you had to choose one person out of Ellis, Ash or Luke to take over and run your businesses for the rest of your life, who would it be and why? Oh, I'll tell you what, in terms of uh, taking over the, the operation now, Wilson, it's like a big job, but like probably the biggest percent of it is YouTube videos. And in that box, I would 100% pick Ellis. I think he's just lived his life on YouTube. Like he's a nut. He's a, he knows all the creators. He, he understands the platform. He knows how to edit. He's, you know, all of us are personalities, but he's like, I think in terms of it, who do I think is going to have the most success and continue to grow a, a YouTube oh. channel and content is Ellis Watts, 100%. And then I think, you know, Luke and Ash are very similar, but they, they sort of have that creative genius spark that I do. Like they are very, they'll be able to see ideas and they'll be able to have the visions. It's just whether they, they have the discipline to, like you, you sprinkle a bit of Joanna Wilson on there, I'm going to graft it out and I'm going to keep this consistency and I'm going to work for the next five years on building this. It's difficult to... I'd argue the same about Ellis though. No, 100%, like, I'm, I'm talking about them too, all three of them, like... <laughs> I don't know, I want to say, I actually want to say Stoney had been most passionate. Like, I'd, I'd be like, right, yes, Stone, like, run this job. Like, he could yeah. be the, he's a leader. He yeah. would lead it. He would run the thing. 
But he's too he's too much of a loose cannon where it'd be like yeah. you lose him for two weeks. You know my Whereas Ash just sort of he's the, the background engineer that'd be the genius but I was gonna say my three the, qualities. So Ellis would be the creativity mastermind behind the content. Ashley platforms. would be like the guy, the engineer, like the operations. The sorting out where need people. I, Ashley would essentially be me, like the sorting yeah, out where yeah. people need to be, what they need to do, day to day runnings. And then Stone would be like the heart and the the hard worker and the passion behind it. So all three of them together. <laughs> Probably just not. not them. <laughs> I give it to you, please. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> oh, I'm talking that with you. Yeah. Cool. Just keep going. This is going to be a two-part series because we're going to do another video that's got non-business related questions. Be a little bit juicy. Thank you very much everyone for watching this video. I hope you really enjoyed it. Remember to comment down below who else you'd like to see me interview um, and just whether you found this insightful. What was the biggest takeaway? That'd be a good one. Biggest takeaway from this video, put in the comment section. Um, so yeah, we'll see you in the next one. I hope Keeps... you did, did some text from the way. Yeah, me too. Way. See you in the next one. Keep smashing it and remember anything's possible. Just work. Bye. Bye.